throughout the CSU. And I think you can see by the number of campuses that are here today, I think the only campus that's unfortunately not represented is East Bay. They were not able to find someone who could come. Um, but so you can see there are people here from Sacramento State, from Chico, from Bakersfield. We have been successful in making connections at all of the campuses, regardless of geography. And there are folks who are part of COAST and an active part of COAST, and their students are active in COAST and benefiting from COAST at each of the 23 campuses. So we cover things that are offshore, a little closer to shore, up onto the shore, and up in the watershed where there's a clear and direct linkage between the material, organism, or process in the watershed that you want to address and the coast itself. So there has to be some mechanism connecting those two things. There are three main goals that guide all of our activities. I'm going to talk about the first two here today, and Amy Vieira, our policy and communications consultant in Sacramento, and she's going to speak after me, she'll talk about the last one in more detail. So advancing our knowledge of marine and coastal resources and the processes that affect them and training the future workforce go hand in hand. These are not mutually exclusive in any sense of the word. And I think you all know that because in doing your research, you involve students and we're training them to graduate and go on into the workforce. And them doing all of that work and receiving that training helps you accomplish the research, um, especially in the system that we have with mostly terminal masters. So the way that we do accomplish these first two goals is by investing in CSU faculty members and students. So as President Ochoa said, we've invested over $440,000 this year in grants um, of Coast Awards to faculty members and their students throughout the system. So these take on a variety of different forms. Um, as you know, many of you know, we have the undergraduate research support program that provides $2,500 to every campus. And we're still making sure that all of the campuses can fully utilize those funds. And that program alone supports about 80 students a year right now, maybe a little bit more. Um, our graduate student research awards support about 30 students a year. Our internships support about 15 students a year. And then um, we support a various number of faculty teams throughout the year. So this year, we spent um, a little over $150,000 in faculty support for research and professional development. Um, and I wanted to give you a little flavor of some of the awards that we made, particularly for rapid response and the workshops. So microplastics is a topic you can't really turn around these days without running into, either figuratively or literally. It turns out we're inhaling them at all times. Um, so there's definitely been some interest in microplastics. Um, I think it was interesting, we got a proposal from a team at San Diego State to study the water quality impacts of the, of the migrant caravan that had landed in Tijuana at the end of 2018. Um, and we also funded a workshop on salmon bioenergetics. I love that picture. It's, they look great. Very excited about salmon. Um, so these, our programs are popular. There's a lot of demand for coast funding by the faculty. And so unfortunately, that means that we have unmet demand. Um, the grant development program received 23 proposals this year. That was the second highest number ever. We received 27, I think, two years ago. So those proposals together requested, you know, almost half a million dollars. And we were able to make seven awards, totaling $131,000. But the proposals are good. They're, they're, they're really high quality proposals. And I think we could have easily funded 10, if not more of them. So. Going into 2019-2020, um, the way COAST funding works, if you don't know, is the bulk, of, the bulk of it comes from the chancellor's office, and then every campus makes a small contribution. The campus presidents have agreed to a 10% increase going into next year, so that's gonna give us about $20,000 more. And I think that this is one place where we really probably, we haven't discussed this yet, the executive committee and I, but we definitely need a little bit more funding, I think, for some of the faculty because, as I said, these proposals coming in are, are really high quality, and I would like to see us fund more of them. Um, we did do a really good job on students. We provided, um, excuse me, over $280,000 in student funding this year. And not all of that is internal. So the bottom line, the Scholars and Training Pilot Program, that's externally funded. I'm gonna talk about that in a little bit more detail. And the summer internships is also partially externally funded. So together, those are about $75,000 of external funding. The rest of the money is internal. 
Um, and so our numbers for the year, we expect to support about 180 students. Since COAST has begun, we've supported over 1,100 students. But unfortunately, we have unmet demand here too because it's students that makes us really, really sad. Um, as many of you know, because I asked you to do reviews this year, we got a record number of graduate student research award applications. We got 144 of them. I went back and looked at the numbers. Last year was 114, and the year before that was 107. So one of the things that changed this year was the timing, and the timing is better. We're also seeing a lot more first years apply, and I haven't gone through all of the reviews yet, but quite a few of the awardees, even with the very top scores, are first year students. So moving the date back to January instead of October, I think has really increased the accessibility of this program, especially for first year graduate students. And it means though that we're getting more applications. Mm -hmm. And so we need to find a way to also meet this need. But in terms of good news, um, we're seeing a lot of results come out of the faculty from prior support that's gone to either faculty members or students. So among the COAST portfolio of programs, it's the grant development program that's intended to provide seed money to help you go get external funding. And that does happen, but these results here, within the last 12 months, are actually results of rapid response awards, as well as graduate student awards to students in someone's lab where the PI then was able to use that data that the student generated and secure external funding. So this is great, we're very happy to see this. Is great. Okay. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about this new program that we've started with um, Monterey Bay and Moss Lane Green Labs. So we were offered the opportunity a couple years ago to be part of CSU Monterey Bay's Undergraduate Research and Oppor Opportunity Center, did I get that? Okay. You rock. The Undergraduate Research Opportunity Center, they were applying for one of the Department of Ed Hispanic Ser Serving Institution STEM and Articulation Awards, these are large five year awards, five or six million dollars, quite a few of the CSUs have had them. So we wanted to develop a new program and we really wanted to focus on first and second year students. Our internship program, for example, is limited to upperclassmen and graduate students, partly because we think that the hosts want maybe more mature students who have some more experience. So first and second year students cannot apply to the internship program. We've also seen through the undergraduate research support program that while there are no limitations barring first or second year students, they often tend to be a little bit more advanced in their undergraduate career. But what we know from research is not only that our students obviously are at risk of switching out of STEM majors, but that the critical period is those first two years. So they need engaging experiences where they can begin to feel like a scientist and really form that identity. And if they can do that, they have a much more significant chance of staying in the major and finishing, and hopefully finishing in a reasonable amount of time. So this program is designed to specifically engage first and second year undergraduate students in research. And the criterion for participating is that you can't have any prior research experience. So I'm looking to find those students where we're gonna have the most potential impact. So not the students who did you know, a lot of some, you know, hands-on research maybe as a high school student because their parents could help them access opportunities. But we're looking for students who don't have those kinds of opportunities in their lives. They have no research experience whatsoever. They're not, you know, they're uniquely unqualified in a sense to do this and that's who we're looking for. So they're not doing their own independent research. They're assisting graduate students with their thesis research. So they get hands-on experience without needing to be able to necessarily form their own questions or conduct the work by themselves, but they're basically being an apprentice. And everyone gets paid. That's really important because we wanna make sure that low-income students have the opportunity to participate in this and it's not limited to students who can afford to volunteer their time. So the undergraduate students get paid and the graduate students also receive a stipend for mentoring the undergrad students. So in 2017-18, that was our first year, and we had two graduate students participate, including Lindsay Cooper, right up here, and another graduate student from Moss Landing. So we had two mentors and three undergraduates. So Lindsay supervised two students, and the other graduate student, Dan Bossard, supervised one. And these were our students, and 
they, um, two of them were first years, one was the second year. I think at least two of them were the first person in their family to go to college. And it made a really big impact on them. I mean, it's significant. So one of the things that I think is true about Coast is that we do not support huge numbers of students. I mean, I think that's obvious. But I do think that the students we support, the experiences are very, very deep and potentially transformative. And they have been for these three girls. Um, so two of them are continuing again this year. The plan had been to get them in in their first or second year and then bring them back in their third or fourth year, but we realized it probably wasn't a good idea to just let them go. Our chances of getting them back were small, so we made adjustments um, to keep them in for a second year. Um, Kylie didn't come back the second year because she wanted to do something different, and we're struggling a little bit to find a good match for her, but we're still in touch with her, and we're gonna get her set up for next year. Um, now we're in the second year of the program. We had a little bit of extra money because another partner in the, in the grant didn't use all of their money, so you rock through some extra money. So this year, we now have six mentors and 10 undergraduates. So some of the mentors, again, have two students. Um, and this is really exciting. So we have more students. Um, again, not a lot, but we think it's really um, exciting for them. And this is what they're doing, you know? They're outside. They're playing with algae. The girl in the top um, right corner with the gloves is she's cutting up smelly shark stomachs and she's really happy about that. So these are experiences that, that they might not get to have otherwise and we're really excited about this. So then what happens is part of the grant also funds money for them to do their own independent research in their third or fourth year. So it's supposed to be this multi-year program where they come in, they get a little bit of experience, they advance, they're more independent, they're studying the question on their own. And our goals here are multiple, to increase student success, to encourage students to pursue a research career, and ultimately to help diversify the workforce. Um, we hope to use the data generated at Monterey Bay to write proposals to secure extra funding to do this at more and more campuses. It takes a lot of coordination. So there's the money not only for supporting the students, but it takes a lot of coordination and staff time to make this happen. So that's something really exciting um, that we're working on. So um, I wanted to talk briefly too, before I end, about the, the grant development program because we'll be putting the RFP out again next month. Proposals will be due in September. Um, these are again, they're $20,000 awards. They're 18 months in duration, and last year for the first time, we asked for standard as well as thematic proposals. So until now, we've always just had regular old proposal, anything you want that's marine, coastal, coastal watershed related, send it our way. Last year we tried something new following last year's Coast Annual Meeting where we focused on a number of different climate change topics. So people could submit their proposal and mark it either as standard or put it into one of these categories. And um, we got 23 proposals. Only four were marked as thematic, and only one of those we awarded. And so I think it just didn't, it didn't quite get the traction that we hoped it would or attract some of the proposals we hoped it would, probably for a variety of reasons. Some people are busy, maybe they're not in a position to write a proposal. A lot of different things could have happened, but I wanted to draw your attention to this we're going to include this in the RFP again this year. We'll do a webinar, which maybe will help people understand what we're trying to accomplish. Um, and I think we've seen too, over the years as we develop new programs, it just takes a while for things to catch on and, and build their own critical mass and then take off. And a lot of the programs will work that way. So with that, actually, I'd be happy to take 